Hey, how's it going, my good friends? How's everybody been doing? Staying locked up, getting kind of uh, room crazy when they get out. Things are starting to loosen up here slowly but surely here in Texas. So let's just pray and hope everything goes well once it's all been executed. So, but remember, stay safe. Don't take chances. Keep that mask on. Wash them hands. Stay the distance. And uh, let's do this together. Working together, pulling together, we can do it. Now, time for a review. So, I'm going to be talking about a pen, give you some measurements on the pen, give you a little history about the pen. Then I'm going to ink up the pen, and I'm going to show you how I ink up a cartridge, just in case, for those newbies that are just coming on. They still aren't sure how do I ink up a cartridge. It's real simple, not rocket science, and we'll do that as well. Okay, so here we go. Look at the pen. Right here is the Eversharp 10,000. It's a vintage red chrome. As you see here, the beautiful red and the chrome on the cap of the pen and clip which is a GT Parker clip and has the Evergrid uh, Ever Sharp logo excuse me on the uh, back of the cap and the Parker logo so right here in front is Ever Sharp and then on the back of the cap made in the USA with the Parker logo and then it's got the little uh, ever sharp logo here on the clip as you go up the clip on the top of the finial really serves no purpose I guess it's just for design but nothing I could find out you know what else it could be used for typical design and we go down the barrel and as it thins down narrows down at the end and that makes it more uh, accessible to post for those who like to post their pins now what in the world is 10,000 for have you ever thought what does ever sharp 10,000 mean what do they use 10,000 for well I'm here to explain that for you 10,000 Names, I jumped the gun, 10,000, okay. What Eversharp hoped to do with the pen is when you ink it up, you could get 10,000 names come from the numbers of word or could supposedly get out of a cartridge of ink. Does that make sense, Mr. Announcer? Yes. So, okay, so you ink it up, and you can write out 10,000 names from one cartridge of ink, supposedly. That's what they said. And you can use the Parker cartridges and converters that will fit this. And it has kind of like a ribbon texture uh, on the section uh, up here as well. Uh, but I would say this one is really just smooth. There really is no texture. Uh, on the one I was looking at, it was saying that there's a texture on it, but not this one. Uh, the uh, length of the pin closed is 5.5 inches. It does post nice and securely at a whopping 5.1 inches. And the weight of the pin is 12 G's. The date of this pen, when it was made available to the public, was around the 50s to the 60s. Again, it's red with a chrome clip. And I'll just announce you get in on it. Uh, it's a quirky precursor to the Parker 45. And we go down to the nib. And we have a it's a medium medium nib, a smooth 
medium nib produced from 1958 to 1962. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. So, right here on the grip, it is not a smooth texture. It does have kind of a ribbon uh, feel to it. There's lines going down the grip. So, uh, I would give it give I, I would think that it made to help give your fingers more stability when you're holding the pen and starting to write with it because sometimes people tend to sweat a lot the fingers get a little slippery and it would slip down where on this it would probably slip down pretty quick but not the way the grip is made on this pen and on the nib my friends the nib does say medium nice looking nib of course parker right yeah and there's the feed okay so Let's go ahead and screw the barrel, and here comes the converter in it. So, what I want to do now, my friends, is I want to ink up the pen. And right here, you need a syringe for all you new people listening that have never even dreamed of doing this. Not all your pros out there, but just your beginners, your learners, your, your thinkers. How do I do this? Regular syringe with a dull end on the tip of the needle made for filling up your uh, cartridges with. Okay. And you can get those at most of the normal pin dealerships, is that correct? Correct. And the ink I'm going to be using, I purchased some ink from uh, Frank's store, the Federalist Pins and Paper, and it's the Monteverdi Red Velvet. I thought that would be really awesome to trick this juicy Monteverde ink that Frank at his store, Federalist Pens, is uh, sells samples of. And you get you get your money's worth right here. Bang. Okay, so let's get to filling. Here we go. As I lose everything and I spill everything over, that's all I need to do, which I've done before. And I'm sure it won't be the last. So, I'm going to get a little bit of ink there because I'm going to be writing with this little jewel for a while. So, here we go. Might as well give it the whole fill up. And I purchased this pen from AB Rustic Relics. Yeah, I went on eBay. I looked them up and I've been thinking about this pen and uh, I said you know what I want to try it because it had that it's a it's a brand that I like so uh, here we go now I'm going to put it back in and I'll give it a minute or less to get down into the feed itself and then we'll get to writing do that for a little bit let that just sit up there for a minute but anyway uh, now here's where I got the pen you can check out Big Bad Brad at AB Rustic Relics here okay and on eBay uh, what are they on eBay simply AB Rustic Relics you can also find them they're on Facebook Instagram and Twitter and Twitter. Pinterest yeah, yeah, they're all over the place. So, if you're looking for a Parker or something uh, like a ballpoint mechanical pencil or something different, you might want to check out AB Rustic Relics because they've got a lot of cool things going on on their website. Uh, that's what they do for a living. So, uh, give Brad or his wife Amara a buzz. Send him a message. And uh, if you have questions for them, they've got answers for you. So, let's set this aside now. And let's get ready to go. Uh, and I guess I'm going to use some clarifying tank paper. What do you say about that? Okay, cool. All right. We're buzzing along today, my friends. Hot and hearty. All right. I feel like rock and roll with some fountain pens today. Yes, sir. Let's, let's see if this is going to write. If not, then I've got to get it ready to write. Okay. Here it goes. Here 
here we go. Hmm, how good does that look like to eat? It's rather dark. Yeah, red velvet. Hmm. Well, that's what it says on there, but it doesn't look red velvet to me, but, uh, hmm, interesting. So here we go. Very nice nib. Okay, and let me just put this away for a second. Let me try something here real quick. Because it looks red to me in here. That's the color right there. It's called a Monteverdi Red Velvet. And that's the color it comes out here. Now I'm thinking that maybe the reason why it looks so black here because maybe the cartridge may have not, uh, may have had some, uh, oh, a little bit of ink in it. I didn't bother to clean it out. It looked clean enough to me, but you never know. Uh, or there could have been a little ink in the, uh, in the feed and nib as well. Again, I didn't bother to clean it up because I wanted to see how it, you know, would write just like it comes out of the box. And it writes very well. But this is the color right here. And I shall write the color down for all you fine groovy pen folks out there. So, this is really a, a sweet pen, I'm telling you, sweet. This is Monteverdi Red Velvet from Frank's Federalist. pins. Alright, now let's try a little few S's here. It really has some really nice ink flow. Let's try a little wetness here with this nib. Got a wet nib going on, so let's try the reverse on it. It looks like you do. Get it? There you go. There you have it. Downstroke, cross stroke. And this is with a little bit of pressure, not too much, and you're not going to get pretty much more. So you're not really going to get any different line variation at all. So there you have it. I really do think the pen is truly a really nice writer. And I always get to thinking when I get a vintage pen or just an old pen, from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. That's been a while for decades. What a story a pen could tell you on the adventure that they have been on with their owner. What they would do on the day-to-day -day routine. Well, that's how my mind gets to thinking because Pins are special. They each have their own personality. And then when you speak of old or vintage, wow, now that's something as well. There you have it, folks. This beautiful, ever sharp 10,000 with the Chrome GT Parker clip that has the Eversharp logo on the back 
the cap, and also the Parker logo. And that beautiful nib as well. Folks, that'll wrap it up today. Thank you for joining me on Larry's Fountain Pen Review. Until our next review, be safe, God bless, and wash them hands. Don't text and drive. Later, folks.